that's a low tech sustainable and possibly the most effective thing that we can do to fight climate change planting trees a trillion of them to be exact of course you have to ensure you don't plant in ecosystems that are not meant for trees for example marshes or natural grassland have you heard about the scientist called tom crowther he is a climate change ecologist at swiss university zurich his his study made a buzz last year according to his study planting 1.2 trillion trees and letting those that already exist grow and stand wherever they are will be the best way to deal with the atmospheric cra- cla- carbon dioxide the main driver of climate change much better than the next best possible climate change solution so you know whenever you see a tree even just one you know it's extremely valuable trees are an efficient and cost effective way for a community to improve its air quality and reduce pollution a mature tree absorbs between 55 to 100 kg per year of small particles and gases like carbon dioxide which are released into the air by automobiles and industrial facilities in addition a single tree produces nearly 3 quarters of the oxygen required for one person isn't that amazing so why are we talking about trees and climate change what talk is this well don't you worry you are listening to the 19th episode of the audible weed walk on the 20th of november 2020 this is nina welcoming you i couldn't help mentioning the play of numbers you know 19 and 20 a little exciting thing don't you agree well even though you have heard nothing about the weeds so far i promise all talks and chats will lead to some weeds and here that are here and now and yawns it turns out that while trees are an excellent way to offset climate change causing elements of our wild and, and um, climate change causing elements are wild uncultivated greens that we keep clubbing them under the generic term weed are an excellent indicator of a climate change since um before before okay so let's see uh, much before the weeds must be that uh, microbes um then uh, maybe some kind of a um, algae and things like that um air quality the subtle soil temperature fungi um start responding to the climate change but it is hard to monitor them beyond a lab situation but climate change affects us all so it's indicators of improving or deteriorating and if you do want to be judgmental simply just understanding the changing of the climate should be moni- monitored by a larger group of people even the lay person well scientists happen to think so and have designated weed to be an excellent indicator it is a good indicator of climate change because with the changing climate and uncertain erratic weather events and the desired crop may not be able to adopt but weeds will so only that they are able to adapt better um is not the only character that you know uh, sets them apart they the weeds also succeeds pretty rapidly you must have noticed that when you start on the on a land you see a certain weed whether you recognize their values or recognize them or not you see a certain kind of you know weeds growing the next year the same weeds may be present but not as prevalent as before something else may have taken over i have noticed this over and over two years back it was the year of the comelina in my yard it was comelina everywhere nothing else much grow- was visible or even growing this year it has been acanthus acanth acanthus aspera or the devil's horse whip this needs not be th- this need not o- not only be an indicator of the soil condition but also the weather comelina grows in a much wetter cl- condition than 
devil's horsewhip. And this year, it hasn't been as wet as two years back. Weeds in the role of an indicator is not a surprise for many of those who works on the land. You will also learn um, if you pay attention to it. I go to an area and see spermacosi, which is a type of button weed. Several species of spermacosi grows around here. I see them and I know that the land has been disturbed. They grow in a variety of soil condition, but grows best when the soil is disturbed. So, if you see a field of spermacosi or a field where spermacosi is dominating, you know there has been something in that land, some construction, some kind of extensive digging and tilling, irrespective of how nicely the landscape has been made to look normal. With garden plants, with flower growing, you cannot cover up. The spermacosi speaks the truth. I feel a thrill that a detective would feel when I notice, as if reading something some, something like a secret code that the plant is telling about the land. Funny thing is that it is out in the open, an open secret for people only if they notice. By the way, another wild green commonly called fireweed, which is, all find, which is usually found in a cooler climate in northeast India and also maybe in, a, um, in Valparai and Coimbatore area in Tamil Nadu, is also known as a pioneer species on disturbed land. Um, both these plants that I have just mentioned, the buttonweed and the fireweed, are highly medicinal too. And fireweed is also edible. So they are, you know, they have their other uses also. Similarly, I have seen Brihad Kokshura, which is again a medicinal herb, also edible, that primarily grows near the ocean and growing grows quite, um, you know, in, in, you know, you will expect it to be quite close to the in, in the, in the seas. But I have seen it in the, quite near the city center in Oroville, far away from the sea, indicating a patch of salty or saline soil. Saline, sandy and soil rich in limestone is what the Brihad Kokshura likes. So just by looking at Brihad Gokshura, you know what the soil type is. Way back in 1920s, Frederick Clements, an eminent U.S. botanist, explained, saying each plant is an indicator. It is an inevitable conclusion from the fact that each plant is the product of the condition under which it grows and thereby a measure of these conditions. As a consequence, any response made by a plant furnishes a clue to the factors at work upon it. So, what weeds actually do, which we need to pay attention to? Well, found a, a write-up by Stuart B. Hill and Jennifer Ramsey that sums it up well. We already, uh, so I'm going to list a kind of a, a, a set of, you know, seven to eight um, uh seven to eight things that the weed um, actually uh, helps us uh, to detect. This is apart from the very fact that weeds are also edible and medicinal that you already know. Weeds reveal information about the properties of the soil, particularly their nutritional status, the pH value. Deep penetration by the roots often enables weeds to accumulate various elements from the subsoil, particularly trace element, and transport them to the surface. Different accumulator plant concentrate different elements. This, this character speaks to me a lot. Weed is the language that the climate and the soil uses to speak to us if we care to listen. In fact, um, a report from decades back in 1939 reported that a uh, Floridian disease, uh, it was a local disease on a corn that was caused by zinc deficiency. This disease actually was dealt with by allowing zinc accumulator weed to develop during the fallow years. So the, we the weed actually brought up the zinc and that, you know, took care of the plants. This is what I tell many times to, to other growers that when you see a plant growing, 
your desired plant and next to it is a is one or many weeds don't pull out the weeds you never know this you haven't explored the synergistic relation between the weed and the plant you desire so only if that your weed is taking over you know not allowing the plant you you are trying to grow perhaps then it's a good time to thin it out and also uh, sun that uh, you know dried material and put it back to the soil again for the same reason it the weed pulls out some nutrient from the soil that is necessary for the plant which the your desired plant may not be able to gather otherwise weeds have also been used as an indicator of the presence and the quality of the of the presence and the quality of groundwater limits of tolerance to environmental factor vary some weeds may have may have a narrow tolerance for one variable while a wide tolerance for the other you know heat rain water you name it so the narrow tolerance weed are actually often used as as indicators for specific condition like you if you say you know if you have very high metal this particular thing will not grow or will grow so those actually have been used in several cases plants may be sensitive to several environmental uh, factors and if you if you know them then they become the weeds become a good indicator of them growth characteristic of a weed may um, be revealing as its a uh, presence so you know if you see a weed not only just present but it has taken over you know one uh, one year we were trying to explore what kind of weed that edible weeds that we have can feed a whole lot of people and we were exploring behind in the matri mandir garden and the whole place was taken over by alternanthera uh, ficoide which is a uh, edible amaranth uh, growing wild and you almost couldn't see anything else so that itself is actually speaks of a condition perennial weeds often make better indicators than annuals and weed as a community are better indicator than single species this is very important the last one because it's not one weed that you know is indicator and therefore other weed you pluck it out it is a community and in nature you know in nature works on collaboration rather than competition and even the apparent competitions are synergistic and collaborative so this is very important to remember in um, in you know sustainable farming or growing or even otherwise in restoring a land so all that is great but what is um what it needs is a good research and documentation weed as an indicator has been somewhat well documented in temperate re- region in tropical region not much study has been done however keep in mind as i always mention in tropics we are blessed with diversity diversity is our strength our source of resilience our treasure trove Driv- diversity in anything language food culture climate everything in such dry diverse land plants too are diverse and they grow with diverse conditions fighting against several other creatures that would love to eat them in different stages they grow up strong building their immunity honing their we- weapons against the pesky herbivores hence many of the weeds fighting out growing strong are also loaded with goodness and toxins some herbivores have evolved to eat some of the most toxic stuff without much problem but they too have preference if you have monangani or alternanthera sessiles growing they will go for it rather than something less palatable and will completely avoid others humans however need to be careful while i love the butter lettuce butter lettuce and some fresh vine ripe tomatoes with sprinkle of fresh ground paper love it but lettuce while can be grown with tender loving care does not have fighting qualities of a wild born born and grown the wild ones therefore most of them are best eaten very young if fresh but for most part best eaten at least blanched if not cooked remember that 
Hope this series of podcast and this particular one managed to emphasize one thing what Emerson in 1878 had wondered and mentioned in his book Fortunes of Republic What is a weed a plant whose virtues has not been discovered so let's discover it together with our awareness and attention with that thought I'll see you next week stay well and stay safe